Hello, my name is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to Faith Elements, where I like to explore some of the basic elements of a life of faith. Now, if you spend enough time in your Earth suit, you will eventually have the thought, I'm not good enough, cross your mind. At some point between your birth and the clearing at the end of the path, there will be circumstances that make you feel inadequate. At some moment when some insurmountable force weighs heavy on your soul, bubbling up from somewhere deep inside, the words, I'm not good enough, will come. It is with all measure of certainty I say this because I am also certain that the being watching this video is human and therefore susceptible to the same versions of the same emotions shared by the other 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. You're in good company. Now I want you to do something most of us try to avoid. I want you to relive a negative experience in your life. Not only do I want to ask you to relive it, I want you to spend a little time thinking about what it felt like when you said, I'm not good enough. For me, I have several memories tied to basketball that fall into that I'm not good enough category. At 6'4", people naturally assume that I play or at least played basketball. Actually, I get asked more if I played football, but that's due more to my width today than my height. While my height has stayed constant since I was in high school, my width has not. If you saw me at my 6'4", uh, 200 pound max weight, there would have been little doubt that uh, football was out of the question, but basketball was a safe assumption. My usual answer when people ask if I played basketball or football I say, no, I wrestled. I quickly relieve their confusion by saying, actually, I played basketball, but I'm just never that good. My I'm not good enough moment came when I went to a basketball camp specifically for post players. It was one of the largest camps in the country devoted to big men. So there were guys from all over the United States. At that time, I was probably around 6'3", maybe 190 pounds. That might sound tall from your perspective, but since this was a big man's camp, I was among the shortest guys there. There were several guys around the seven foot range mark. There were many guys in the 6'6 to 6'8 range, real freaks of nature kind of guys, and they were all at this camp. I was so short by comparison that I played point guard on our five on five and three on three teams. I was quite challenged in the vertical leap department as well. I, I only really dunked once on a 10 foot rim. That was most likely one of those odd places NASA studies for being a, a gravitational anomaly. So I didn't have much to offer by way of physical ability. I wasn't strong enough under the basket. My dad, my coaches and others tried to tell me to just get mean under there. But mean wasn't part of my character. Heck, I still catch and release spiders that, that we get in our house to this day. Mean just isn't a part of the package. So I can't jump, I'm not aggressive enough, and now I'm attempting to play point guard. Seeing as I've always been the tall guy, I had nothing in my history that prepared me for this challenge. To say I stunk as a point guard was an understatement. D to verbally encapsulate the technical explanation of our games, we were regularly and without much mercy skunked. So as a point guard, I just didn't measure up. But as I already mentioned, I was among the shorter crowd in this camp. And did I mention that there were also some very talented guys at this camp? There were also much bigger guys than I was. I, I had quite little experience playing against guys that were bigger than I was. Combine that with my lack of experience and my astonishing three inch vertical leap. And let's just say that uh, I was dominated most of the week. It was a frustrating week and I was convinced that I was not good enough. So what about you? What was a time in your life that you said, I'm not good enough? Was it at work? Was it at school? Maybe when you tried a new sport or a new craft? Whatever it was for you, I'd like you to take a moment to reflect on the emotions associated with thinking to yourself, I'm not good enough. There is sadness, there's anger, and there's probably resentment and presumably surrender. It's that last one that really gets us, right? When, we, when the not good enough kicks in hard enough that we just walk away from whatever it is that we were trying to do. There's this great story found in the book of Exodus that I would like you to take a look at after you watch this video. It's a story about Moses. Now, I won't spoil the ending if you've never read it, but there is this great story found in the third chapter of the book of Exodus where God has a very special task he wants Moses to do. God wants Moses to go before Pharaoh and ask him to free the Israelites who have been in captivity in Egypt for many, many years. 
you have to sort of see the scene in your mind. There is this bush that is burning out in the desert, and God speaks to Moses through this burning bush. God says to Moses, go now, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Now, this is a pretty big job, to say the least. I think I'd be just a tad apprehensive if I were Moses. And Moses is apprehensive, too. He immediately disqualifies himself by saying, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Now, God, of course, encourages Moses by saying, I will be with you. There's this continued dialogue between Moses and God on into chapter 4, and Moses has his doubts about the stuff God is saying, and God is overcoming his objections. Moses is making his case that he's not good enough, and even says that he is slow of speech and tongue, and then goes on to suggest the big one, God needs to pick somebody else. Now, the Bible says that God's anger burned against Moses at this point. Now, like I said, I won't spoil the ending if you've never read the, the, the book of Exodus, but Moses goes and does the thing that God had been trying to get him to do. It's an amazing story, and it serves as a model for us to consider today. Now, earlier I asked you to think back to a time in your life when you said that you weren't good enough. Now, I'd like you to think about a present-day example of a way that you were trying to convince yourself that maybe you're even trying to convince God that you aren't good enough. What is God speaking to your spirit about that thing? How are your arguments holding up against God? Is the conversation still going? God didn't give up, and he did not give in to the arguments that Moses presented. When you present your arguments, are you listening to what God has to say in return? What is God whispering when you're telling him you're not good enough? Like Moses, God equips those he calls to do what he's asking. And that, my friends, is your faith element to consider today. Thanks for watching.